what's going on guys and welcome on in in today's video we got some very important stuff to talk about very time sensitive matters guilty gear collab is right around the corner after that we got the summer units like seaside Bologna, holiday Euphine. maybe they'll be in a group banner kind of like we just saw and then we still have the new ip confirmed as well as maybe any other limiteds that might be just coming out in between now and then now why am i making this video this video is going to be about red green blue must pull units still in 2021 i made some videos in the past on this sort of um you know what we consider the best units just for newer accounts to kind of pick up and really accelerate your power levels but the list is getting less and less things are changing a little bit some units are not included here and we do have i think one new unit in addition to this list now maybe two that we're going to talk about differently so stay tuned for that guys some of it's already shown at this table but let's talk real fast about the limit is okay like I said, Guilty Gear collab confirmed for April, guys. You need to start saving your bookmarks. I'll have a separate video talking about um, where those stand in terms of if you have limited bookmarks, which ones you should pull for first. But let me say this, okay? When we're talking just limiteds versus non-limiteds, not power levels or anything like that, right? It's usually, not usually, it's almost always better to pick up the limited units if we're just talking about two random. If there's a limited versus non-limited, the limited has a chance to never come back, especially in the case of Guilty Gear. Since it's a collaboration, um, if Smilegate decides, you know, that or Smilegate and whoever runs Guilty Gear decide they don't want to continue the terms, then they might not come back next year, okay? So you usually want to pick, pick up the limiteds. But let's say there's a limited that we expect will probably come back, you know, more often. Let's say like a DN or, you know what, maybe let's even say the, let's say Elfelt from Guilty Gear, who is considered one of the weaker ones. Not to say she's not, she can't be good. Um, she looks great. I, I really like her style. But, you know, we, we all agree, I think, that she could probably use a little bit of a buff, just in terms of the other limiteds. Now, if Guilty Gear were to come out and you're okay with the possibility, you know, that she might never get buffed or nerfed. Sorry, not nerfed. She might never ever get buffed, changed, whatever. If you were to pick up Elfelt or one of these units at this table, I got to be honest with you guys, I would, as a new player, if you were more concerned with power instead of completing your Pokedex, your collection, the units at this table will probably be way more valuable for your account. They'll get you so much more progress, so much more gains than an Elfelt would. But like I said, it's something you'll have to decide for yourself. Limiteds are very valuable because of their rarity, especially the Guilty Gear ones. So I just want to give you the information. You'll make the, the choice for yourself. And to be perfectly honest, it's probably just still safer to get grab the limiteds while you can. And then hopefully you'll grab one of these non-limiteds um, either when their banner comes back again. Usually they, they only come out once or twice a year. But then they have access to things like Mystic Shop Rotations. Um, you have the four to five star books just randomly getting them. Covenant Summons, etc. Right? But I do think some of y'all might that want to just accelerate your power levels. You could consider picking up some of these over maybe lesser used or less good limiteds just keep in mind they might get buffed all right anyways without with that introduction out of the way let's move on with the video and talk about our updated must pull units of 2021 march 2021 and on okay all righty guys I, we're gonna break this down into two categories two and a half categories technically first we're gonna talk about you know let's go ahead and talk about the two units i'll spoil it right now two units that i think are must pulls as of today there's very few and guys really we just use the term must pull, but technically there's no must pull units anymore in Epic 7. That's the great thing about this game. If you're thinking about starting or just started, know that there's a lot of free to play options, free access units that you can get without ever having to summon or do anything rent like uh, with random chances. You can complete like all the, the basic content in the game, all the necessary content in the game, just using free to play, easily accessible units. Okay. But these two units I'm going to talk about, I still think are as close to must pull as possible. Um, and then we're going to go into a little bit of selective summon talk because some of those units are going to fall into the next category, which is just one step down from must pull. So must pull contenders or honorary mentions. Okay. They're definitely a step below, but they are the last, the other few that kind of just, you know, make the cut above the rest. Now, keep in mind, guys, there's some units that I considered must pull before, like last year that have fallen off. A lot of y'all watching might disagree and say hey car you missed out this unit i think they're so powerful and you know what i'll probably agree with you but we can only talk about a select few that i i think in my opinion are just you know a cut above the rest so let me know who you think should be on that list this list 
for you know recommending to your new friends playing or maybe mid game players that are just looking to pick up something very powerful on the banner they that they shouldn't miss out on but here's my list and you guys let me know what you think okay so the first two we're going to talk about guys they're at the table left and right front right and center you already know it guys the number one in my opinion is tamarin all right no surprise here, guys. So we'll go over through this quickly. If you don't know what she does, she does like every Soul Weaver's job all fit into one. She's been good since her release. After that slight fix, you don't need to know about that. But she's absolutely insane. She needs almost no gear. As you can see here, um, I just slap on really, really budget gear. I have a plus 12 weapon, and I'm using her in tier 3 expedition. Some people even still have her at level 50, and she'll work just fine in Abyss um, Hell Raid. Now, if you do want to push some PvP content, you might want to get, get her to level 60. Let's say you're running like a Tamasaria Cleave or, I don't know, some other gimmicky crazy stuff. But if we're just using PvE, guys, she is an absolute monster. You will never be unhappy with her. She's the Soul Weaver you reach for in almost all areas of content, right? Attack up, dual attack, full cleanse, CR push. She She's busted. They're never going to... I don't think they'll ever bring out another unit like her because... There's a reason we're still considering her as pool because she she does the job of like three units into one. It's absolutely insane. You guys already know it. If you see Tamarin, you gotta pull for her. And like I said earlier, maybe even <laughs> competing with a limited if you're okay giving up that rarity factor. Okay, she will do the most for your count, bar none. Now after Tama, we have another Soul Weaver, and this one might surprise a few of y'all. Okay, and I think that one that's come accelerated very quickly to the top ranks is. Rowana. Now let's talk about it real fast. Let's start with PvE, okay? For PvE, Rowana will make a joke out of one of the first areas of content after Wyvern that you want to rush, and that is Hell Raid. Hell Raid is so important, guys, because you can get extra gold transmits, you can get extra galaxy bookmarks, you can get access to the very, very important, even more now so with the, the Gem Reforge, um, the Immunity 88 chests, the Hell Raid weapon, the speed weapon, which is super good. And then, um, of course, all the other random 88s you get from the trash mobs, plus the one-time 88s, which a few of them are pretty bad, but there are some solid ones in there. You really got to do be doing Hell Raid every month right after you, you know, get Wyvern on lock. You work towards Wyvern, Normal Raid, Hell Raid, and Rowana will make Hell Raid, which can be very difficult for a lot of players, especially the Queen. She absolutely trivializes it. Tri trivialize? Yeah, trivializes it. Now, she also doesn't need too much gear, and the best thing is, guys... For a lot of new players, let's go shift towards a little bit of PvP talk. Rowana um, is good in all areas of PvP, okay? Defense, just she's just annoying. It means um, players won't just... There's a very common uh, archetype, Seaside Bologna plus support. That can just press auto and, you know, Seaside Bologna being as busted as she is will eventually just kill your squad. Rowana shuts that down very fast. She also shuts down Fairytale Tenebria, one of the most oppressive units currently out. And she just... She'll shut down enemy SSBs when they're on defense too. So if you ever see in Guild Wars or Arena, right, teams with Fairytale Tenebria to a lesser extent or Seaside Bologna, that's almost a lock-in win. If they have any extra dual attacks too, she just requires a, f a few molas in the S2. If you're really early on, guys, you can go zero mola, very budget gear. She'll do her job even at level 50, but eventually you do want to stack some bonus healing into the S2 so she can keep up. Now, I just think she's that good because for PvE, plus pve there's really no other unit that can have that has this heal on dual attack she literally just sits there the gear is less important the stats are less important but you know when you want it when you get to end game pvp i'm trying all different stuff i had her on 180 before i've tried the counter build all of it's good now i'm trying mega mega budget she just sits there is tanky as as heck and uh just you know has a little bit of vr plus immunity to live through some pvp content right anyways i think she's her s2 is that unique she should be pulled for for both PvE and PvP, but less so than Tamarin, all right? But she is ahead of the other few we're going to talk about in just a second, okay? So let's move on. Next up, we have, let's talk real fast, Selective Summons, okay? Guys, we all know the main contender for Selective Summon for a while now has been this beautiful lady right here, Cigarette, all right? Now, as you can see, I have a I am a little bit biased because I never was able to pull cigarette early in my E7 career, so I never had a, uh, a need or never was able to use her and see how powerful she was, especially post buff. You know, when when they gave her extinction and fixed up some other skills. Um, she's amazing early wyvern unit, one of the best. She can be used in you know early raid as your single target DPS, PV content, and she has access to extinction, which 
you could use if you wanted to venture into PvP. Keep in mind though guys, in PvP if you're planning to fight Arbiter Vildreds and you're using her on Wyvern gear, you may have a tough time because usually they'll outspeed you without... Um, you'll probably have to bring a, a combat readiness pusher, some kind of support so that she can go before the RB and one-shot him before he can, you know, obliterate your squad. But just having that extinction, if you're fighting some other Soilvers with Revive or things like that, you know, it can be nice too. So I do think she is still probably the number one must-pull selective. Now, I don't think she's must-pull banner because of the fact that most people pull her from selective. And on top of that, guys, we actually have... In my community especially, a lot of people are selling me on her. I mean, not selling me on her because I already have her. I already love her. But Fire Robbie, guys, might be very close to your selective choice. Now, I still think Cigarette gets the edge. However, Ravi, let's say if you don't if you don't decide to get Ravi from selectives, I do think she is very close to a must-pull. Just below Rowana and Tamarin. And she is just absolutely amazing okay both let's start with pve um pve less so but you know you can even use her to farm let's see you're you're running into some difficult earth content that you got to farm for catalyst just slap ravi in the front it might be a lot slower but she won't die she'll do a lot of damage right you can just rely on her to carry some fodder now she's also great in um abyss there's some later abyss floors some early abyss floors i'm sure she'll just take care of easily but later abyss floors especially, Ravi is one of the queens because the later abyss floors get so difficult. Her kit is designed with the stuns, with the damage, her tankiness, her inherent survivability. She just does it all and she's just extremely reliable. That's PvE. Now let's move on to PvP. Um, my god guys, you all know endgame PvP with Ravi. Once you can kind of get her stats tanky enough and then have some damage on top of it. She is greedy on stats, but once you can kind of put it all together, she will literally 1v4 if your opponent messes up. If they don't bring enough damage to kill her, if they bring too many earth units, Ravi can often just lock out the match. Now, there are a lot of ice units that can counter, and with the upcoming shoe buffs, she might, you know, be a little bit... You might have to be a lot more careful drafting her. We have things like Cerise, Fairytale, Tinebri, and then the shoe buffs. You know, Seaside Bologna. It's fire units have always had a little bit of a rough time with how strong the ice units can be, but Ravi is no joke. You won't regret using her for PvE or PvP. She's extremely strong, so she's a contender for your selective. Probably go with Cigarette unless you really like Ravi. Um, but yeah, she's she's absolutely insane. You gotta get her, okay? After Ravi, guys. We will put Ravi as number one in the step below. The honorable mention. She's number one in that list. Right after that, guys, we have Lilius, who is kind of taking a step down, too. Let's talk about Lilius real fast. She... Made it to the top of my last, you know, must-pull list. And she's still good, guys, right? So let's go over why she's good. The S3, the S1 means her skill 1, dual attack. S3 has, a, you know, it takes the, the highest attack of uh, your teammate. So it has some damage. Meaning with the S1 dual attack, unlike other pure knights, she will bring a lot of damage to the table while also providing mitigation and being that frontline tank. Um, She also has the full cleanse, S3 AoE plus CR push pushback she's just she's still amazing however with the prevalence of units like uh falconer clurry plus you know adventure Roz, she's less needed but still very very good okay just there's some other options adventure Roz can do a lot of things she does as a free-to-play option uh, which is why she's not considered must pull but she can do you know sometimes you need that cleanse you need that dual um the CR push or the, the AOE S3 with some damage on it. So it's really the cleanse that makes her super valuable. The provoke can be good for PvP, but not very not much so in PvE. But same same deal with the other units. Great PvP, great PvE, which is kind of what we're going to see throughout. That's why some of the units got cut. They're only good in one area, either PvE or PvP. Tam is exception. But Lilius, guys, she, she does what a lot of knights do all in one package, right? She's got the cleanse, she's got the offensive capabilities, and she can still just, you know, she's tanky as a knight. So I think she deserves to be, um, she's kind of fallen off a tiny bit just because there's other options now, but she still should, you, you should still respect her. I think you should still grab her if she comes up on the banner, okay? And last but not least, we have one more knight, and that is Mr. Crow. Crow's an interesting one, guys, okay? Because if we're talking just new game, right, you can use him as an early wyvern tank. But for Wyvern 11, you can just use a Momo, and then the Momo will be good for Montmorency. Special Teams Montmorency will be good for, you know, your your raid healer, your PvE healer. She cleanses, she heals, she's amazing. She can tank early Wyvern. Wyvern 11 and 12. Maybe even 13 if you really like her, but eventually by then you'll probably have better stuff like General Purgus, hopefully. 
or a, a tankier knight with some debuffs. Crowd doesn't bring any S1 skill 1 debuffs, so he's not the best Wyvern 13 tank. He's a good Wyvern 11 tank if you need him. So why are we putting him in this list if he's, you know, not the best? Like PvE, he can be okay. He gives defense up. He's a knight, so we can hold Aureus. He protects your team, frontline tank, but really does nothing too special. So why is he on this list, guys? Because he's a PvP god. Now, especially for newer players, guys, don't underestimate how important it is to win Guild War battles. So before we go into Guild Wars, Arena RTA, tried and true, amazing. He just does everything you want out of a unit, okay? He'll protect your team with Aureus or Adam and Shield. He gives defense up. He just has amazing base stats. And then the S3 is the kicker where other knights fail. He can close out the match by himself. He can kill problem units while while um, mitigating for your team. You know, he has one of the just best skill sets, most synergistic. He can protect and then he kills. It's 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 incredible. Now, for Guild Wars, why I want to hammer this home is because early game, you know, like I said, for PvE, he doesn't too much. But in Guild Wars, guys, you can just reach for him and he will both, you know, bait enemy problem units. He'll give defense up and then he'll close out an S3 kill some another problem unit on top of that. It's, it's especially important there because early on in Guild Wars, you're going to be reaching for your, you know, best geared units. You're not really going to be building P uh, PvP meta units. So if you do end up using him early as like your Wyvern tank, your Hellraid tank... He'll be just an all-star for PvP as well. Um, yeah, you just he he can fit. I, guys, I'm kidding. You, I'm not kidding you. I don't think there's any comp if you bring the right support with him that he can't just sort of attrition to death in Guild Wars. There's very few that will outpace him if you gear him appropriately and bring the right support. He can be picked every single place. He's also good on defense and offense. Amazing. That's why Crow I think should still be considered as the last. Uh, contender or right below must pull okay guys we have units like you know if there's a second second honorable mention all re i remember that um units like Kron we we had before he's not here anymore alencia she was there she's not here anymore um i could see people some of you guys in the chat might or some of you youtubers might chat and reply to this video saying things like iseria you think a lot of my viewers are saying units like bizarre for pvp but guys i think the list should be shorter and shorter as we progress because you know, there's just better units coming out. Not anything really is must have anymore, but this is my list. Let me know what you guys think. Keep an eye out for these guys if they're if they ever come through the banners, if they're on the Mystic rotation. I think they they're worth your bookmarks and even potentially worth more than some of the limiteds out there. Okay. So remember why I said in the beginning versus rarity versus power. Anyways, guys, I got a lot more tutorials and I'm gonna have a lot more account reviews coming up soon. So thank you as always for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.